starting with uh, the chemistry examples that uh, Henry put together with my help last year using Calplot 3D. And then I'll get to some uh, of the more general math examples, I guess, that I, I've worked with more. So in biology, in the biology Libre text library, uh, if you go through uh, home bookshelves, ancillary materials, visualizations and simulations, and Calplot 3D interactive graphs um, or figures, then you can get to these interactive biochemistry graphs that Henry created. I guess I helped create a couple of them, but he yes. went, he went uh, wild <laughs> after that. <laughs> so um, I pulled up one of them on my uh, screen, the irreversible RX A to B to C. Um, let's see if I can move this out of my way get there. Oops, that was the other one. That will work too. So this one was actually a different one. Let me, let me actually go to the one I was talking about since yeah. I had that up there. So I, that one got my attention as a, a non-chemist just because it was so colorful. But um, <laughs> as you uh, can see, we've got different graphs representing different things that uh, Henry and perhaps Brent, you understand well or, well or better than I do. But as we vary some constants, which um, I suppose we might want to name, name those constants and we could do that on here. Maybe we've done right. it on your, your visualization on your page because you can adjust those there. But um, we can see how everything changes. Is there anything important when all three uh, intersect? Uh, actually, I hadn't thought about that, but not, uh, not yeah. really. Yeah. No. But, okay. but the, for the students, the students seem to get that everything eventually goes to zero if the rate constants are reasonable except for C, which is the blue line. Yeah, the blue line definitely does not go to zero. It's a one, right? So. Right. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's an ODE where C is the, the everything eventually go, everything is going to C with a positive rate. So there's, right. it's, uh, it's an yeah. and C doesn't go anywhere. So C has to go to one. <laughs> there's no, no other way around it. So right. we can animate one of the parameters. And again, we have to specify is A and B must be the A and the B in the problem, right? So Yeah, they're the, they sure should be labeled answer. as rate constants, you know? It's like rate constant for the first. A to B has a rate constant, and then B to C has a rate constant yeah. as well. So we can yeah. animate them, we can move them around, we can put different values in for the constants. So that's all um, still revealed in the, the dynamic figure. Whereas on Calplot 3D, I'm going to go over here and I copied the query string from the same problem or the same demo uh, into Calplot 3D, which is a freely available uh, app that's actually on a LibreText site now, server, c3d.librotext.org slash Calplot 3D. And then you need the slash index.html uh, in order to play it. The rest of it is just a string that is used for this particular example. But um, here you can see in the, the window, the, the demo, and you see the sliders up here that we saw in our figure, dynamic figure. And then below that, we can see how these curves are defined. And so this is how they were built. We have to understand the relationships in terms of the parameters. And I guess this one, we might need to make a little bit wider. We wanna see the full relationship there. Um, but you can see how those were entered in terms of T for time, the, sort of the, the time parameter here, uh, and then A and B are the values that are actually being changed by the parameters up here. And then we've got another curve, uh, this is the green one, yeah, how it's specified. When we click into a object, you see more choices. So the, the range of values for T to graph, uh, the number of steps to make it uh, more resolved whether you want orientation arrows on that curve, which you don't want in this case, but you might want in a Calc 3 situation. Uh, we're restricting it to 2D, whereas usually 3D is the default for Calc Plot 3D. And then we're using a constant primary color, which usually the color is varied as you move along the curve to allow a three-dimensional curve to be re rendered well. And we'll look at that in a little bit if we have time. And then we got a third curve down here where we've got uh, the red curve par parameterized. So again, a lot of information stays the same, but just the parameter, parametric equations of that curve are changed. All right, so that was a curve or a demo that was already done. And um, I could show you where it, what it looks like in uh, LibreText. 
So the query string was generated from, I can show, sort of mention this here, uh, in CalcPot 3D by looking, clicking on the menu and then clicking on the file option there. And then the last option is encode the view in the URL. And so that would generate the, the query string that is shown up above. And I guess I'm not going to put it there, but I did click it so that you could see how it just re-renders the page. It has all of the settings that I just varied to, so not the original ones that were in, in Henry's uh, demo. And now that's all encapsulated up here um, in this query string after the uh, app, Calplot 3D apps uh, address. So if I click in there and click right at the question mark and then go to the right, I can select that, and there's probably a faster way to do it. On my Mac, it's just a really quick thing. <laughs> Here it's taking a while to get there. But once you get there, you'd control C to copy it. And um, we're gonna control V to, to paste it, so there it is. So I'd hit control C, and then we've got that query string copied into the, um, the clipboard, and we'd be ready to go into LibreText and paste it there. So if we go in here and let's see if I can locate the one we were looking at there. That's not it. Um, here it is. So on this page, if you're an author, um, you'll be able to come in and edit this problem. I guess initially, if you've just started with LibreText, you may not yet have the clearance to edit a page in this place, but you could create a, um, I guess it would probably be something that we need to give you clearance to create in this location if you're going to begin to create these because it's best to create these figures in this ancillary materials or at least in the visualizations and simulations section of the bookshelves so that they can be easily shared among different books and it encapsulates really nicely as you can see here. Um, so anyway, we can, we can set you up to be able to, to have clearance on that particular folder section of the, of the LibreText to add uh, new, new pages and create these. So let's see, once we've got um, the page up, which we have right now, we can edit the page. And initially it's gonna show us the re rendering of the visual, which I sort of like because then as I edit the HTML, I can just click right back to the visual and see whether the um, changes I made have affected it the way I wanted it to before I publish uh, or save the, the whole thing. So now I'm gonna click on the HTML option on the right. And you can see now some code, which is essentially a template that we can copy and paste into. And so what I would do would be to take, and I'm not gonna change this, Henry, don't worry. Um, but not really change it. So what we do is copy the part that's in parentheses um, up to the question mark type. It's right after the HTML. Notice that this is a different um, URL. It's a slightly different URL that uh, pulls up a dynamic figure. In this case, with a control panel. Uh, there's another one that doesn't have the with, con with control panel option, so that there's no controls. It's just a, a three-dimensional rotatable, maybe. Uh, doesn't have any uh, sliders with it, but a different option. Uh, but uh, this uh, would be whatever I'd paste in my query code that I, or query string that I copied from the URL. And then we could adjust a few things, as I'll show you in a few minutes, things that we could change. I don't remember if we ended up probably changing some things in here. We might have easily, I can't remember. Yeah, so if we look carefully, let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Um, is that big enough to see? Yeah, 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 we can see that. Okay. So is this, Paul, this is all, everything you selected there that got, that's going, would get replaced if we were gonna change it. That's all one big quote. Just That's, one set of double quotes, is that it right? It is, and it's not the entire quote. Notice that it begins back here at the beginning of this okay. section. So this is a piece, what I would do once I've created one of the, these, and this is what I still do, I just uh, copy the figure, create a new one, and then I just use it as a template to paste in my new code for my next figure. And so, you know, we just use the same information. Now, if it's not gonna have controls, we need to use the other uh, option here because it has different CSS, it reveals different amounts of the Calcplot 3D interface. And so that's where we would make a change here to adjust that. But there are a few things that you 
can't control as easily in CalPlot 3D, but you can adjust once you get it here. And so that's um, where I was wondering if there are any here. I think at least you can change the X axis label and the Y axis labels that are here. Again, I don't know how well you can see them. They're underlined. Yeah, but, I can see them, yeah. Yep. But that um, is something you could change. You can adjust other things that, um, you know, maybe you decide you don't want the axes to be showing. You could make show axes be false instead of true. Um, there are many other things like the center X percent. Uh, that's where the center of the screen is. So if you want to shift the graph over a little bit in the window that you've got, you could adjust that. Right now it's barely to the left here, 0.08. And then 0 0.53, it's about halfway on the Y vertically. And then let's see, um, some of them have to do with three-dimensional spin, which doesn't isn't relevant for this two-dimensional graph. And um, there's some having to do with the labels on the sliders. I don't know if we've changed any of them on this one. It would be nice to change it to K1 and K2. <laughs> there's, yeah. They were like, I think A and B, weren't they? No, 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 they yeah. were. They were A and B. So the, yeah. the A and B there should, yeah, could be K1 and K2 would be. Yeah, but the terms. But that would have to, they have to change all of those in the equation too, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, I think that's why I did it. <laughs> yeah, you left it alone. Right, right. So um, I can show you where some of the options are delineated in my help manual. And actually I have to look back at there to be sure I get them co exactly correct here. But mm -hmm. let me uh, come back over and just look at the visual again to remind us of what we were looking at. It takes a second to render. And then yes, up here you had uh, the ABC and I guess we don't have anything else here lit labeled yet. We could put an equation on there if we wanted to. Um, I'm not sure if you did that in any, any of yours, Henry. Uh, uh, no, 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 I didn't label any of the equations per se, just the axes in general. Now I do see the ABC up here on top is sort of hidden in this rendering. Yeah, it. right. Yeah, yeah. Because so that was the left uh, Y axis was the concentrations of each one of those species. Was that true in the original version? Let's save it. Here. Uh, maybe. Uh, it could be because I remember I had sometimes I had troubles with labels appearing in certain places and yeah, it's, it's probably scale. It's off scale. Yeah. Yep. So we could adjust that and, and rescale it. That would be one of the things that we could do. And in fact, that's a common thing that needs to be done on these um, is to just adjust under, under the HTML. Um, this is the easiest one to, to adjust actually is the zoom right here. So we could try to adjust that a little bit. It doesn't have to have so many digits anyways. Um, we could try 0.28 or 0.25 maybe. See what that does. We can first just change to visual. Takes a second to render. Still not small enough. Uh, let's see, is there any space at the bottom? There is some space at the bottom. Oh, I yeah, can try yeah, moving yeah. it down a little bit. So let yeah, me try I that. See. So let's see, we've got um, the center Y percent. We could increase that maybe. And this is sort of set based on automatic things that give these long decimals. But um, yeah. let's say, say 6.6, 6. just see what that does. And maybe I'll change the zoom. Where is that 0.25? Make that a little smaller yet. I don't know whether that's necessary. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll pause here and just note that uh, Zoya has joined us Oh, great. I don't know exactly when, but recently. So Zoya, we're, uh, Paul's leading this session, and we're one of the examples he was going to use to sort of demonstrate this to us, or is using, happens to be from uh, Henry's website, who's also here. So we're, we're, we're learning a bit about the CalCBOT 3D through this, this example. Yeah, I think. Thank you. Sorry, I had to take my dog to a vet, so I was late. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming, Zoya. So I think that we need to do a little bit more tweaking in this, Henry, because I see that it's, yeah. it's changing the length of this um, axis. So we'll have to think right. about how to adjust that. Right. But th those are some things that we can e at least easily do is adjust the vertical location of it with a center Y percent and the zoom to make it smaller or larger. And so that's what we can play with later. I'm gonna cancel this change because it did not give us what we wanted yet. And we can play with it a little bit more um, maybe after the session. So now what I want to do is show how to put something in, maybe in a math area. So for Zoya's sake too, let's see, where did I want to be? I guess I'm going to actually just go here. So this is acting like a normal uh, 
Well, this is going to be how you'd add one to a page. Let's see, I'm trying to think of the two things I want to do. I can start here and um, show you what's available in the calculus. In that, well, let's see, this is actually in the math area. So it's got a lot of calculus visualizations. But if you go through the math, LibreTex, home, bookshelves, and visualizations and simulations, it doesn't have the extra ancillary materials level there, but uh, this is where we find the CalcPlot 3D interactive figures that have been created so far. Uh, there are links to chemistry and physics. We should add one to biology uh, yeah. and link there because of what's now present there. So here you've got some for the OpenStax calculus book that I've created. Um, I think one for the Guichard calculus OER and some that I've created for my own materials that are the other calculus figures. Um, I think I have two for the Apex Calculus materials that I've imported. And this is just a link to CalcPlot 3D. So it's just a, a, next, a link that goes to it. So if I go into the OpenStax Calculus, there are a number of example figures in here, some of which are Calc 2. So we've got the washer method um, problems that our CalcPlot 3D is, allows you to render and that are creating some cool uh, 3D figures with controls that you can control a rotation on these and so forth. I could show that in a few minutes. And then we have a whole bunch of figures from the Calc 3 uh, OpenStax book that um, just are rotatable, three-dimensional uh, figures that I could show you in the book, or some of them are. And these are all the ones you can, you can play with. Let me actually go back there and show some of these. So let's see, this is the Calc 3 book that I use. This is my custom version of it. And I believe I've imported these into the, the OpenStax book itself though, so everyone can more easily benefit from most of these. So section 11.5 has uh, lines and planes in space. This is where I actually started the process of creating these. And where the first one of these dynamic figures is located that I use what uh, CalcPlot 3D to generate. So this First figure is not the first one I created, it's maybe the third, but this is one of my favorites because it took a line in space, which this picture is supposed to show the, the direction vector of the line and to show that this uh, line is actually in 3D and not somehow just on a flat surface. But it's really hard to see that um, on paper and even on the screen without the ability to rotate. But when we can rotate that, you can see how the line and the vector are parallel and you can see a better sense of how that line is really three-dimensional. There's actually a way you can use 3D glasses with this too. Um, I think you just click the three key when this is active, yep. And if you happen to have the red, blue, I think I've got a pair here, red, blue, blue 3D glasses, you could put them on and this would now look 3D. And so you could rotate it around and it would actually look more three-dimensional. And it does. All right, but that's sort of a bonus feature. Um, most of the time, we'll probably just be rotating it around like that. So this figure is one I generated with CalcPlot 3D and took a bit of work. Further down on the page, um, a bit easier to generate. Actually, this is one that is, took me a bit of work there to get those lines all rendered, but it was just a bunch of uh, parametric lines that I was able to put into a CalcPlot 3D um, plot and then make it clear that these lines are skew, not intersecting, but not parallel. And further down here is the first one I created. And finally, there it is. So these are two intersecting planes. And the original figure in the book was incorrect. It had one plane actually on top of the other. One was, tran it was transparent, but really it was rendered just in front of the other one. And so you really could not see the intersection very clearly. And now we can see it and we can also rotate it around and take a look at that more clearly. So this is, again, sort of the power of what we're able to do here. You saw with Henry's uh, examples that we're able to use, move some sliders uh, here, just able to make the three-dimensional figures come to life. Uh, one other example I could show would be the, let me just come out to another window here. Um, let me come out and do my Calc 2, just to show you what those volumes of evolution examples look like. 
It's from chapter six of my book. I think it might be chapter six of the OpenStax book too that I'm pulling from. So determining volumes by slicing. And then I think there are four examples on this page that are 3D and rendered with CalcPlot 3D. Oops. It's taking a second to render them. This is the first one. So you got the, the figures in the book that are static. And then below it, and maybe I'm wrong. Nope, not that one. It's the next one. Here it is. So we got figures in the book that are static and showing how this looks. And then here we have a cat plot 3D figure that we can actually move the slider to rotate and see the volume of revolution. Um, we can, if we want to, rotate that and take another look, closer look at it. Um, we can show representative rectangles. If I move this back, we can see that more easily. And then move that through the region. Again, for those who teach math, this is a familiar topic. We could uh, revolve that representative rectangle around the axis of revolution. We could then move that disk back and forth through the region. And uh, we can also show washers. And so this is actually something that can be quite useful. I devolve that one. In fact, maybe I'll hide that. And we can now just revolve the washers around and show how we approximate the surface. We can increase the number of washers and it will actually give us an approximation of the volume that we're getting. And it can be compared with the exact value of the volume that we'd have if we integrated using integration to find the exact volume. So that's just one example. I think my best on this page is the very last one, which I just zoomed past. Uh, this one allows you to use other axes of revolution. So again, just sort of cool what you can do here. Um, we can enter y equals positive five, and it would go above. Uh, we can enter x equals five, and it's going to go to the right. So you can just sort of see how the revo revolution of this region, the, re the triangular region here is going around different dashed axes of revolution. So this is again the power of this particular um, dynamic figure that's using the control panel to help students visualize these volumes of revolution. So let me just show you how we can generate these directly from CalcPlot 3D. So let's see if I can move this over. I'm not in the mode I want to be in. Let me just open a new version of CalcPlot 3D here. So CalcPlot 3D uh, you can see the address up here. Um, you can find it pretty quickly on my site, although um, I think that if you Google it, it still is bringing up the old server. So you really want to be on the new server that's c3d.libretext.org. And that is true because I Googled it when you started this a while ago and it was at the, uh, the WordPress one. Y yeah, the WordPress site, if it's the WordPress site, would be the one that shows my uh, information and it gives the, um, the the correct links, but if it goes to Monroe CC faculty, yeah, Paul Sieberger that, or something, that's the old one. Yeah, that well, that was one on top, and I knew that wasn't right, so I dug down, <laughs> dug down and hit the WordPress one. Anyway. Okay, good. So here's what we come up with first. It's a three dimensional uh, graph of a function of two variables. Um, we could pick anything we want here. There's a lot more here in CalcPlot 3D than I can uh, demo in an hour, but um, you know we can come up with curves like we were looking at earlier. Let me just uh, hide this one and show you some of the objects we can create. So we have a function of two variables, is which, which is what we were just looking at. Uh, so a surface that's generated by a function of x and y. Uh, we can generate a space curve, which is what we looked at earlier with Henry's stuff. Let me show you a three-dimensional version. This is a, uh, a helix, and you can see how the colors are varied as you go through it. So you can see what's in front and back. Um, it may need to be um, larger for you to see real well, but the purple is in front of the blue, and the blue is in front of the green. And so you can see how things are stacked there without needing 3D, 3D glasses. You can come up with, um, let's see, in this case, show different things on the um, curve, so show motion and animate them. This would be what you could do with a, an animated 
uh, control panel version of a space curve. So we could here have um, the black vector there representing the velocity vector, the blue vector tracing out where we're at from the origin position vector, and the green vector happens to correspond to the acceleration of the motion on this particular uh, curve. So not that it always has to be toward the center with a helix, but it is for this rendition the simplest way of um, denoting this one, parameterizing it. All right, so we can uh, also just look at 2D graphs, and we might want to, in that case, just make this zero, and maybe make it go from zero to two pi. So we'd use pi for, for pi. And then if we do that, let's see, if we animate it starts at zero, goes around the curve, back to two pi, and you can see how we could take that. Now, if we wanted to take this and put it into um, a Libra text, I'm thinking that I, I forget how much I've done to make the parameters uh, visible, but um, let me just go with a 3D version of it. And put point one t back in there. Maybe make it go back from negative 10 to 10. And let me make the color not be constant. So let me see what I can get out of this page. So if I wanted this to appear in my Libra text, and maybe I want to hide the box. Uh, let's see, the options there are on this, I think, to so the middle. I think there's a whole table, a whole manual, help manual on how to get different features to show and not to show, and what, what does what, and I'll show you how to get to. So we can, in this case, let's see, show the box. We can hide the box, so we just see the uh, the curve and the axes, and we could even hide the axes if we wish to. But we'll just leave those there. And now let me come up to the file menu on the menu bar there and encode the view to, in the URL. And so it takes a second to re-render the page, shows you what you get. There are occasionally some features I may not have implemented in the URL saving process, and if that's the case for you, you can let me know and I can add them so that they are able to be saved. So then I'll take that query string from the question mark on. Let me go back to the beginning of that again and just show where that came from. So I'm just getting it from right after the HTML, copying that question mark part right on to the right. Always going to have a type right after that question mark. So I did control C on that. And now I'm ready to go into my uh, helpful zoom menu keeps showing up up there. All right, so let's see up here. I'm going to come in and um, I'm going to go to LibreTex Home. And this again, it would require you to uh, get access to right to the CalcPlot 3D area of the bookshelves in order to create your new ones in this way. But this or, or I can do a transclude and then fork of one of these pages into my sandbox. Yeah, that would work, although it may not be able to be uh, referenced from your sandbox for your students, so I would recommend not creating Right, well, but for, creating for me getting started, that right. way, now I can move it somewhere. Yes, no, that's correct. Um, that would work. Right, and right now this is copying an existing page is the way to get my template because there isn't a, there does not exist a template to insert in the, the embed elements when uh, menu. yeah right yes that's correct um, we can you could yeah in order to edit the page and get the template you're right you're going to need to be able to go in there so when I did this presentation last um, the permissions had not been changed yet and so all of that was already present everyone could get in there and edit the you know copy and, and so forth but that's true. That's something we need to think about making more accessible for everybody. Uh, but anyway, let's go down to this uh, within bookshelves and math and visualizations and simulations. And then uh, coming to the CalcPlot 3D interactive figures. There are also GeoGebra simulations in there for those who are math uh, people might find those interesting. And then we're going to find one that we can edit. So I'm going to come into this open stacks list. Paul, well, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, so yeah. 
um, when I open a Calculat 3D, I don't have all these um, features that I saw on your screen. I thought that was maybe because I used to use the older version. Mm -hmm. but I'm just looking at it right now, and I only have a place to enter the equation. So are you looking at c3d.libratex.org slash Calculat 3D? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're only going to have one um, function initially when you first open it. Let me open a new window up there. Um, it'll look okay. like this. And so is this what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I this... never had, um, even when I tried to create stuff, I don't remember I ever had um, more features that you, know, you were showing earlier with the slider and everything. Well, they're all there. It's just not um, maybe obvious how to get to everything. <laughs> so the, um, the sliders that I showed there are coming with the, the space curves and including, a, you have to include a parameter in order for the sliders to appear or you could add a slider from this, this list here directly. So there's a slider option here. Mm. Um, the volumes of revolution, those actually at the very bottom of the list is surface of revolution. Okay. And those you can play with. There's regions of integration, parametric surfaces, implicit surfaces, which would be any equation of X, Y, and Z, or cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates. Um, I think I used most of them before, mm -hmm. but I, maybe I just don't remember it. That's okay. Thank you. That's okay. Some of these things may be new in terms of things that you know, weren't developed, like the revolution, volume of revolution is new. So yeah. I developed that in order to be able to put them into books and into my Libre text. So let me see if I can get back to where I was there. Um, here we are. So I'm going to take um, one of these down below here that are labeled as a, a test. And uh, I guess what I could do, these are just a standard one, which I guess is sort of what I have. Um, this is with a control panel test. Um, and this, uh, I don't know what that one is. <laughs> it hasn't been too long since I created it. So let me try it with control panel just to see what appears here. I forget with the space curve what I'll get. So I'm gonna just come in here and what I would normally do is just to copy this. Let's see, I see what's there. This is an axis of revolution one. So I'm gonna copy this example and go to options, copy. You should be able to do this to copy to your sandbox. So that would be something I should be doing this as a, as a, um, just an instructor, which I actually have an account that I could try that. Uh, maybe I will, let's see, the time is clicking away here though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in here. So this is gonna be, let's see, Libra, best demo and just copy that page. It should come up as the new page once it's done. Did I not click it? Let's see, try it again. Oh, okay, it says the title is too long. This actually doesn't mean that it wasn't created. In fact, I might have just created it twice. Um, it actually gets created anyway. This is an oddity I need to ask Delmar about. So coming back out here, let's go into the OpenStax calculus area and see what I've got there. All right, I've got one LibreFest Libre demo. Apparently it knew not to create a second of the same name. We'll see if that's true or not, but uh, come in here. And now um, if we put this in our sandbox, for example, at that point, you should be able to edit it as a, um, you have the, the rights to do so in your sandbox. So let's see, edit. And now I'm gonna click on the HTML and I'm going to select the quotation mark there. Um, see, I've got some things written in there that weren't in the original. And I'm gonna come up to where the question mark is, right after the HTML. This is with control panel again. So uh, we'll see what this looks like with the space curve. I'm experimenting here a little bit. So control, 
uh, V to paste it in. And let's go ahead and look at the visual for it. So it looks sort of like what I was hoping. Okay, we've got the, the rotatable figure there. And we actually also have the animate button and the slider where we can see the motion. So we can animate and see the motion and put this right into our book. All right, any questions so far? I'm, uh, you maybe don't want to get into this, and that's okay if you don't. I'm curious what, so earlier on you pointed out the little bit of the URL in the template that's got dynamic figure WCP in it. And right. So there were a couple other options there. Do I need yeah. to be concerned about those? Well, let's take a look at that. Let me um, save this first so that um, I can put it into a page in a minute. Okay. And then let me come up to CalcPot 3D and show you the fastest way to get to my help. So if you're using the new version of CalcPot 3D, um, if you click here, the help manual is the second option down. If you click there, it should open the help on another page. And um, let's see, at the bottom of this, or near the bottom of this table of contents, there is the option to create dynamic figures. This is at the, near the very bottom of that. So there's dynamic figures with no controls and dynamic, dynamic figures with controls. So let me click on the dynamic figures with no controls first. And it actually generates one. So one of those that I showed you in the textbook. And let's see, it shows then <clears throat> what the, um, how we save it. So this is talking about how to get it from CalcPlot 3D. It's giving instructions for how to do this. It talks about how to deal with LibreText, which is what we're dealing with here. And for this one, there's no WCP on the end of the dynamic figure. So there's no with control panel option. So it's dynamic figure after CalcPlot 3D or um, dynamic figure with control panel. So it would be WCP capitalized, all caps. And those are the only two options. Those are the two options currently, yes. And if you don't have dynamic figure at all, just the index, it just it gives you the whole applet even if you want to use it with the specific example that you've, you've saved in your URL, URL, you can do that. Gotcha. So I use 90% for the width and you could maybe, you, someone, maybe some of you may have noticed that, uh, but that helps it to just have a little bit of side on the screen that you can use to um, pull up and down if you're viewing it on a tablet or a touch uh, screen of some kind. Uh, also helps, I guess, with the, the scroll wheel on my, my mouse to be off to one side or the other and be able to scroll past it. So having a little bit of space to the sides of that that are not um, rendering as, as controls for the, the 3D or 2D figure. Okay, then it just talks about what to do for, let's see, this is LibreText iframe. It's a little bit easier to see some of it, but pretty much the same thing. This is a very long example. Interesting, I chose that, but uh, you can see what's there shows how to put them into pretext and basically just another um, OER system. So that's the instructions for this one, dynamic figures with controls. I think I may designate or list a few other options here. Let's see if that's true. So here I list the, where you're getting it from, I guess. This is still from Scout Plot. There are a bunch of options listed there, but now we're using no controls and, sorry, I'm trying to locate my own text here. Yeah, oh, there it is. The dynamic figure with control panel is listed here, and that's where we get the control panel on the left side. This was from a chemistry illustration that Delmar had me do. And down here, I list a number of things that we can change. So some um, attributes that we can add to the HTML um, script that's there, the, the, the part that's on the end of the, um, the, the, the URL. And so one of the things would be to maybe force the, the scroll bar not to animate. Um, we can do that um, with no animate equals true. 
we can give a name for the scroll bar, um, maybe in sub x like I did for this one. It's a little hard to see on this screen. It's really micro miniaturized because of the way that one's rendered. But you can see the little n sub x here and n sub y that we can name the, the label with. That is working, but slowly. And let's see, there are also height XY sliders. Uh, this is useful if the XY sliders show up on the trace plane, which is only for certain illustrations. Um, but I guess depending on what you want to do, there may be some other things that I either will create or have already created that may give us some more control on things. But being, being, excuse me, being able to name the sliders is really useful. <clears throat> being able to label the um, axes is also useful. So <clears throat> let me see here now what we are at. We need to make sure we, in our 10 minutes, can do the rest of what we need to do. So this help area is, is probably something I could add some more to, um, to add some other things that may be possible now. But let me go back to the uh, LibreText page here. So we have the LibreFest demo that I'm going to put into a page. And for this one, I'm actually going to jump back to my uh, instructor level um, window here. So I think this will do. I'm going to go to my sandbox and the demo instructor area. And let's see, this is examples and demonstrations. And WebWork demo page. Maybe I'll create a new one just to, to practice that here. So we create a new page. Click on that. And then we'll just call it uh, Libra Fast Web Work Demo. Make sure I save it right away before I change the, the template uh, code there. So it doesn't disappear in my screen, previous screen there. Okay, now I'm going to edit it again so that I can add in the figure. Now I could put some text first. Let me move this down a little bit. And then eventually we're at the point where we want to put in the figure. And so what we're going to do for this, there's not a template yet for these, but you can use the content reuse option on the elements screen to do this. So if we go to content reuse, we now need to locate the um, figure in the visualizations and simulations area. So I'm going to click plus on home and go down to bookshelves, go down to the bottom of that where visualizations and simulations are located now. Uh, the first option there is cop plot 3D interactive figures, currently anyway. And then I think I stored this one within the OpenStax calculus dynamic figures. And come down and let's see, did I skip past it? Why am I not seeing? Oh, it's because it was there were some sub ones there. That was why. There it is, LibreFest demo. So I'm going to select that, LibreFest, LibreFest demo, and insert. And now what I have here gives a path to reuse that just show, shows the path to that figure. You can basically see the whole name there, light and gray. And now if we save the page, it will show up there as if it were right on this page. So we've got some text and you can put more text afterwards. We can put a box around it and whatnot. And then we can rotate and manipulate this right within the LibreText page. Okay, so that um, was done fairly quickly, but hopefully it's clear enough how you can locate these. Um, if you Wanted, I suppose it is possible to put the iframe code directly into a book. Uh, I recommend using this approach though for two reasons. One is it's uh, a lot easier not to mess things up and uh, nice to keep this code separate from the actual text uh, that I'm editing. And second, um, it's a lot easier to share the resulting figures that you come up with if you put them in this library. Okay, we've got five or six minutes left. What questions do you guys have? 
and probably really only two or three, but, uh, but anyway, people shoot with questions. So if I want to copy um, a figure to my um, sandbox, it, when I try, it only gives me an option to kind of duplicate it to that same and space. I guess I, yeah, to that same space. Let's and see. Well, Let me see what I can do. I'm, I'm now logged in as uh, an instructor level. So we see what I can do here. So if I come up to home, I would go then to bookshelves. And let's see, coming down to visualizations and simulations. And again, that's going to look different in different libraries. But in the math library, this is where things are at. And let's come in here and let's say that I'm going to grab, well, it doesn't have a good image on it yet, but yeah, we could grab this one we just did. We can grab any one of these. But if it doesn't have a control, then we might want to grab one of those and copy it. Let's see if this is going to allow us here to copy this. So options, copy. And now what we need to do is see if we can find our sandbox. And I'm not sure if that's possible yet. That's a good question. I'm not seeing that and I'm logged in as a, on this page as a yeah, uh, instructor. Is this what you're seeing too? Yeah. Yeah. When, you, yeah, when you look at the new page location that the page is default and there is no, no way to change. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I would recommend doing is just letting me know you want to play with this and I can figure out a way to make it possible. So I can set up a, uh, place in the visualizations and simulations that would be uh, sort of a sandbox for you that you could use there and that might be great to get you started and begin what, working on it. Okay, what if I want to copy the code to just run it on Calplots 3D? Is that possible to do that? To, to run like the figures that I've got there now? Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember if they get shown anywhere. I think at this point you have to be able to edit the page in order to see the code mm -hmm. if you're looking at the ones on LibreText, mm -hmm. which you know I can give you access if that's something you're interested in doing uh, because that is certainly what I'd intended when we first you know set these up. But mm -hmm. it, the codes themselves would be visible when you're running it in Calpot 3D directly because you'd see it in the URL. Right, but then how do I get it there? Because it only runs, I thought it only runs. Yeah, it doesn't um, doesn't give the URL. I mean, it runs that same. Yeah. Yeah. So if I do this, it's not going to show yeah, the, the URL. Is just uh, it's just that LibreText page. Yeah, so this is a, a, a new thing I, I need to think about is how to get people um, started with it in the midst of our, our new permissions level system. So I will be glad to work with you, Zoya, and get your permission, get your permission set up on something that you can uh, begin to create these if you're interested in playing with it a little bit. Yeah, and I'll say, Paul, I suspect that Henry can create a template, but maybe, maybe there's more to it than that. But Henry might be able to just create a template that has what is necessary. I um, guess the template though is similar to content reuse uh, in terms of when it, I would normally see using it. So my guess is that what we're looking at here is figuring out a way to either allow uh, users to copy the content from the bookshelves or at least from the visualization section into their sandbox to be able to play with that script temporarily, you know, as they're beginning to put things together. Uh, or to give them permission to access uh, a folder in that area there, you know, like create a folder for them in the uh, visualizations Calpot 3D area, which is for their content and that they could add content to it um, and have access to do that and have it somehow show up then on that uh, copy window. Right. I think sandboxes don't always show up on the copy to window. Right. And I think that's actually generally true unless you're in the sandbox already. Right. But. I think that's right. Yeah, because at this point I don't have a textbook, let's say for Calc 3 mm -hmm. yet. 
I'm doing one at a time and I'm not that fast, but yeah. I would, I use cult plots within my class and I would like, I really like some of the examples, but I need to have um, the code to run. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you can begin by looking at the book that I've used um, at Monroe Community College. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look at the courses, Monroe Community College, um, and you can see some of the customizations that I did there. That's not been the focus of this talk, but you know, it is certainly relevant to you. So Monroe Community College is here. And then inside of that, you can see the courses that we've been, been working on. So the Calc 2, I've not changed the book a lot, but it does have those figures in it. Calc 3, I've added a few things to the book, um, in particular in the first chapter with some of the vector stuff. And then uh, later on in, in my chapter 13, dealing with, um, oh, let's see, Taylor polynomials with a function of two variables. So, so anyway, you could look at this book and then just see if that has things in it that you like. You can compare it with what's in the OpenStax book itself. It's mostly the same, but again, I made some changes in a couple of these sections, particularly I think chapter 12, um, where I made some changes, um, parameterizing a curve and things like that. Okay, and I think we'll need to cut it off here. And I think the key, Zoya, is to know that um, even if maybe all of the steps you need to take aren't 100% clear right now, that people like Paul and Delmar and uh, Henry Agnew are very, very accessible to help a, get you moving so that you can get done what you need to get done, but also um, you asking these questions is very helpful to the community because it lets people like Delmar know, and Delmar just himself knows how to do everything. It lets him know that it's not trivial for uh, the average user to do what X, um, and then that, that spurs creation of a tutorial or a mechanism that makes it easier. So um, please don't be at all hesitant to ask for assistance because that's, that's how this whole thing is, gets to be easier to use. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, thank you, Paul, for uh, showing us all this and taking the time. It's perfect. You're welcome. <laughs>